So we'll go ahead and get started here. You see that um, the title for today's presentation is about Assurity Disability. And we're going to be talking specifically about turning objections into opportunities. So as you know, disability is one of the hardest products to sell just because of all of those um, pesky objections. So we're going to talk about those, how to overcome those, how to tell a good DI story, um, a few different sales ideas, uh, and then we'll go over the basics of our disability portfolio as well. So like Oscar said, my name is Morgan Hobine and I am a regional sales coordinator here at Assurity. And we work with Art Jetter pretty closely um, and they've been a great group of ours for many years. So really excited to be able to present to you today, especially since today is May 1st and you all know what that means or maybe you don't, but today is the first day of Disability Income Awareness Month. So a fun-filled May filled with disability. So we really wanted to kick it off for you um, on the right foot and get you thinking about disability. So a little bit about who we are. Um, Assurity is located in Lincoln, Nebraska. So right down the street from Art Jetter, who's in Omaha. Uh, we're a mutual organization who's been around for over 125 years. And actually the first policy that we ever wrote was a disability policy. Um, so it's a something that we're really good at. It's something that we've spent a lot of time doing um, and put a lot of time and effort and thought into. We have a AM best A minus rating, which is excellent. Um, we are considered a one-stop shop because of our vast portfolio, um, both on the life and the health side. Um, obviously, we're going to focus specifically on disability today, um, but just know that we have um, both health and life products as well that expand past that disability portfolio. And we have um, all of our products are, we have simplified options uh, to full medical underwriting. So there's a little bit of something for everyone. Um, touch on a few of the things listed down below too uh, that we really pride ourselves on. And that is being a certified B Corporation um, and also having our LEED Gold certification as well for our building. So we were the first uh, building in the state of Nebraska with that LEED Gold certification. So we're really proud of that. And we really take that um, environmentally friendly, sustainability, all of that, um, and being really involved in the community into our work. So um, just know that we look to treat our clients and our customers, our agents, um, just like we do our community, um, just in all ways. So very ethically, um, very conscientious of um, people. We're just definitely a people organization. So. That's kind of how we take those positions um, into our business. We kind of went over our agenda already today, so I'll run through this real quick. <clears throat> we'll talk about um, why your clients need disability. So I think that's a, an important story to be able to tell because uh, if you're not able to tell that story and tell the client why they need um, this kind of coverage, then you're just not gonna be able to make the sale from there. They're gonna move on. Um, the role of group DI um, and how to overcome that objection. So a major objection is I have DI through work already. Well, let's take a look at it and see how it kind of differs between um, the group side and the individual side, because usually they're very different products. So again, we're going to look at turning that objection. I have disability already, already through work um, and turn it into an opportunity or a sale. We'll go through a few case studies, some other common objections, and then we'll look at some prospecting tips and some sales tools. So we'll take a look at um, what markets to look at specifically, what markets fit a surety best, um, which is important. And then uh, we'll take a look at the highlights of each product as well. So like we state here on the left, your clients need income protection. A staggering statistic, 66% of private sector work, workers do not have access to group long-term disability coverage. So that's a big chunk of the population that does not have disability or income coverage in case they would get sick or um, get injured or whatnot. One in three people do worry about supporting themselves if they are unable to work due to a disability or illness or whatnot. 
Um, so there's a large chunk of people without disability, but there's also a large chunk of people that are worrying about what they would do. So kind of take those, put those together, and that's where disability income insurance comes in. <clears throat> this is a great statistic too that we like to bring up. So a lot of people will think um, disability, so they'll think a total disability only happens to older people because they fall, they get injured easier, they get sick more. Well, one in four of today's 20 year olds, so those in their 20s, um, those in the millennial generation, will suffer a disability during their career. So that's a pretty big uh, number there of people that will either um, come down with some sort of illness that puts them out of work, or they are injured on or off the job and they're unable to work. So one in four. So even the younger generation, those millennials, need that disability insurance, actually probably more than um, the baby boomer generation, for sure. All right, so what are the reasons why they don't have it? So I think once we kind of understand this, um, then we'll understand more how to tell that story and what the objections are and how to overcome that. So again, 48 of consumers need disability insurance, So, um, but only 20% have it. So there are multiple reasons why they don't have it. One of them could be um, because of the common objection, I already have it through work. Some people will say, um, I just don't think I'll ever use it. I just worry that I'll be paying for something that I'm never going to use. Well, we have different ways through writers and stuff like that to be able to overcome that obstacle. So we'll go over those here in a second. But I think those are some good statistics and really show you the vast need for disability insurance. So, you know, a lot of people have life insurance. Um, I'll, I've, Almost everyone, hopefully, has health insurance, um, but a lot of people aren't protecting their income, and that's the number one thing we need to protect here. People are unable to pay for their insurance. They're unable to pay for their health insurance, life insurance. Um, they're unable to pay for um, their bills, their mortgage, and stuff like that with if they don't have an income. So I think they kind of forget that that's at the top of the period pyramid here um, of those concerns. So again, DI is a missing link. So kind of just what I went through, there's all sorts of different insurance out there. People have to have auto insurance, so that's a huge need. People have um, property insurance if they own a house, um, or even renter's insurance if they're renting a house or an apartment. People have health insurance that might be through work, um, might be through the government, whatnot, um, but they need, that, they, they need that health insurance. They know it's pretty much a must. Um, life insurance as well. People know that's pretty important. That's usually a much easier sell than any of the um, supplemental health products. Um, but income protection, as you can see, is at the top of that circle. I mentioned a pyramid already, um, but it's at the top of this circle here. Because um, without that, um, if you take that out of the circle, they're going to be stuck. They're not going to be able to pay for all of this insurance, which means they're not able to drive. That means their house is not protected in case of whatever could go wrong with it. That means that their health is not protected because they can't pay for their health insurance. So what happens if they have to go to the hospital or they need to go to the doctor? Um, and then life insurance, they're not able to pay for that life insurance. So without income protection, none of that is possible. Definitely their most valuable asset, which I think if you would ask your client, what is your most valuable asset? They're gonna say, oh, my house, my health insurance, my car, um, schooling, stuff like that, um, when really income is definitely the most important asset that they have. So disability is that missing link there. So we're going to take those objections. I mentioned a few of them already, um, and we're going to turn it into an opportunity. So the biggest one that we see most often is I already have DI through work. So a lot of um, bigger employers will offer short-term or sometimes even long-term or both. Uh, disability packages um, through their benefit packages. So, um, but a lot of people, I would say the majority of people have no idea what that coverage means. They don't know how long the benefit period is. They don't know um, how much of a benefit they receive. They don't know what um, the exclusions are. They don't know what it is, but they know that they have it. So we wanna take a look at that and make sure that they are truly covered um, and that that disability coverage through work um, is actually worth it. They might not be paying for it, but it might not 
be really covering any of their needs. So take a look at it, ask them do, whoop, do they have short-term or long-term coverage? Because um, maybe they're more interested in that long-term coverage, but they only have a short little few month um, or 90 day um, short-term policy through work. Ask them, does your DI provide a benefit until you can return to work? Or is it um, just in your current occupation? Is it any occupation? That's important to know. Is your group, group coverage portable? That means can you take it if you move to another job or if you quit that job or um, are terminated or whatnot? Does it just completely stop? What percentage of your salary does your group DI replace? So that's really important. Personal DI typically covers uh, roughly 60%. That's give or take of your salary. That's industry average. So we want to make sure that they're at least getting that. And if they're not, we may want to look at extra coverage or replacing that coverage. And then are benefits from your group policy considered taxable income? That's an important one as well. And then do you count on bonuses to meet expenses? So if people are counting on bonuses to kind of make up for um, lost time on the bills they've paid throughout the years, um, they're not able to get that bonus if they're not working. So we want to make sure they're covered there. So some good questions to ask. And again, um, Oscar at Art Jetter is recording this um, presentation and I can send out a PDF format of it afterwards so that you have these questions on hand. So why sell disability insurance. Uh, I think this is important to know uh, because it can seem a little daunting with all of the different benefit periods, elimination periods, all the different riders. There's a lot of bells and whistles that go into it. Um, and it's something that you might get turned down for quite a bit before you finally get a yes because of all those pesky objections. Um, but why is it important for you to sell it as an agent? Some reasons here. Lack of competition. Um, there's not a ton of competition in the market because people are kind of iffy on selling it. They're looking at those quick, easy wins. So the life insurance, auto insurance, PNC, all of that, um, instead of, you know, getting them what they really need and um, putting in that work. So this is for, um, you're able to specialize. If you have that DI in your booklet, in your portfolio, um, you're really able to offer them something that a lot of people can't. And that's really intriguing to people. You can ensure they're in completion of other financial objectives. So it could be really, um, kind of goes with the next one too. It could be a door opener into sought after markets. So if you're already looking at um, other insurance with them, so say you're looking at health insurance or you're looking at life insurance, just complete that, um, complete those other financial objectives by adding DI into there. Close that final link. And then account retention as well. Um, this kind of a sh insurance, disability insurance, is actually does provide renewals on commissions. So you're going to keep getting paid on it past that initial commission, which is awesome. It creates a revenue stream, um, so it keeps that money flowing in each year for you. So if you built up a good book of disability business, you're going to be paid on that for years to come. So it's great to keep um, that account retention. So that disability income portfolio. So I mentioned that we have quite a few products, um, both on the life and health side, but in our disability portfolio specifically, we actually have four different products. We have a Century Plus disability product, which is our fully underwritten, our simplified product, um, which we'll go into a little bit more here, uh, business overhead expense. So think about those business owners, specifically small business owners and then a graded benefit um, disability income protection as well. So for that impaired risk. First for that Century Plus, gonna run through these real quick because I know you don't wanna sit around and listen to all the, the product puke here, but issue ages will go 18 up to age 60. The occupation classes range from 4A to 1A with the 4A being more of the desk jobs, low risk, 1A is going to be more high risk, so like those roofers, chiropractors are actually included in there as well, um, roofers, painters, more high risk occupations, work with their hands a lot more. Maximum issue ages, we can go up to $20,000, which is equal to about $450,000 a year. 
And then benefit periods is start at a one year and we can go all the way up to age 65. So whether they're looking for that short term or long term, we can kind of make it fit with their needs <clears throat> with those with that wide range of benefit period. Elimination periods, that's that waiting period. So we start at 30 days and go all the way up to a year. And uh, Morgan, uh... it is guaranteed renewal. Yep. Go ahead. And let me say this more. So, like in this case, you know, like uh, who who will be like the best occupation classes? Like, uh, uh, give us an idea. Is it like maybe like plumbers, electricians, uh, self-employed folks, or? Yeah. You bet. I believe um, either on the next slide or the next few slides, I actually kind of break down the occupation classes. And if that slide isn't on there, I'll make sure to go into that a little bit more. But I'll give some examples here. All right. Perfect. In a minute. Um, and then we'll talk about the yeah we'll talk about the writers as well. So let's sounds great. Move on first. All um, perfect. First, I'll talk about that true ONOC definition just because that's really important and kind of a differentiator uh, between our products and other disability products out there. We do have a um, two-year true ONOC definition built into our Century Plus product. So that means for the first two years after the elimination period is satisfied and they're considered totally disabled, if that disability keeps the insured from doing all the substantial and material duties of their own occupation, we'll continue to pay that full benefit. So I'm going to provide an example here because um, I think it's easier to kind of understand it um, through a story like this. Uh, the example I like to use is of an ER nurse. So ER nurse. She's on her feet a lot. She's lifting patients. She's really using her back um, quite a bit. However, she gets into a car accident and she does injure her back. So she's unable to do the job that she was trained to do. She wasn't able to be on her feet for long periods of time and lift patients and all of that. However, she can sit at the front desk of the ER and check people in. So she's obviously not making as much as she would as an ER nurse, but because we have that two-year true ONOC definition built into the policy, we're still going to pay her her benefit even while she's working full-time checking people into the hospital. Um, after that, it would turn into an ENEOC, so then we would quit paying that uh, benefit if she's still working full-time. Now, we do have an ONOC writer that we'll talk about on the writer's page that can extend that ONOC definition past the two years, so it could go to, um, depending on their benefit period, so it could go to five, ten, um, or to age 65 or age 67. Okay, I don't think I have the slide here with the occupation classes, so I'm going to go back real quick and just talk about those a little bit more in depth before we move on to the writers, because that one can get a little long. So occupation classes, just to go into that a little bit more, um, 4A, I mentioned, are the desk job. So it's going to be more, that's where your insurance agents fall in, um, fall into that category, accountants, um, and just people that sit at a desk all day long, you know, billing people, um, nurses that work in a doctor's office setting are all, also going to be considered 4As. Um, all other nurses, doctors, mainly all of your medical staff are going to be considered 3As. So a nurse that works in a hospital is going to be a 3A, along with doctors, lab techs, uh, phlebotomists, all of those are going to be 3A. 2A, we're moving into more of the manual labor, so it's going to be um, cosmetologists are included in there since they're on their feet and work with their hands a lot. Um, carpenters, farmers are 2A, so that's a really big one um, if you're in the Midwest at all. And then uh, 1A is going to be more of your high-risk occupation, so I mentioned, mentioned roofers, um, contractors, mechanics, um, and then chiropractors I mentioned as well. So um, that's one that a lot of carriers won't take anymore, um, but we will actually take them. We'll take them at a 1A. So keep that in mind. We'll take chiropractors at a 1A. Um, another one that we have a niche in is with dental hygienists, and we'll take those at a 3A. Um, for one reason or another, a lot of carriers won't take dental hygienists, but um, we will, and we'll put them at a 3A as well so they get a really good occupation class. That's a little bit more on the occupation classes here. Perfect. Thanks for doing that, Morgan. A little bit more as we go on. Yep. All right. So that writer's page. I probably won't go through all of them today just because it can take um, 
a lot of time. Um, the so Supplemental Disability Income Rider, we're going to go over that on its own slide here, um, I believe. And then um, the Critical Illness Rider, we'll jump down to that one. That works like our standalone critical illness product. So if you've seen that or worked with that at all, you're going to notice it's uh, very, very similar. Um, we pay out a lump sum benefit upon diagnosis of one of our covered illnesses. So there's a little chart that'll come with that illustration or with that policy. And we have three different categories. So it's going to be heart and stroke um, is one category, cancer, which includes invasive and non-invasive. And then another category, which has organ transplants, paralysis, um, severe burns, Alzheimer's, um, just other miscellaneous um, illnesses. <clears throat> So what will happen is we'll pay, you'll select a benefit, we'll pay out a lump sum benefit upon diagnosis of one of those covered illnesses, but we do a three category approach. So I explained those categories already, but what will happen is we'll actually pay out 100% of that benefit at least once in each category. So if they have a heart attack, uh, we'll pay out a full benefit. Um, a couple years later, they're diagnosed with cancer, we'll pay out a full benefit until all three of those categories are um, and until all three are filled and then we'll close it. But so it's not a one and done product and it is a completely separate benefit from that uh, monthly disability uh, benefit. So completely separate pools of money, which is nice. So it doesn't take from that disability benefit. Guaranteed insurability rider is one that we almost always add on the younger ages, just because they're able to apply for more of a benefit later on if they get a raise or they switch jobs or whatnot. Um, they can apply for more of a benefit without providing evidence of insurability. So we like to add this on, um, especially with the younger ages, middle ages, um, anyone that is expecting to get some sort of raise or maybe switch jobs or whatnot. Um, it's a really good one to add on and it's a very um, inexpensive one as well. So own occupation writer, I already explained here a little bit, but we do have it built in for two years automatically into the policy already. So if you want to extend it out to your benefit period, so say your benefit period is 5, 10, or to age 65 or age 67, you can do that with the own occupation writer. And um, we'll keep paying you even though um, you're working full time doing something else. So keep that in mind. Automatic benefit increase writer, that one is kind of like our COLA writer, cost of living. Return of premium, um, that one is based on a schedule. So we'll pay up to 100% of those premiums back. So premiums meaning um, anything paid for the base policy plus any riders. So even those riders are included. Um, we'll pay up up to 100% and they would have to make it past those 25 years um, or more. So to age 65. <clears throat> so if they make it to that age or if they let the policy lapse or they cancel it before then, they'll at least get a percentage back of their premiums. So if you go in and run an illustration or have Oscar help you run an illustration after this, um, on page two of that illustration, there's going to be a schedule and it's based off of the person's age, the benefit amount, um, their occupation class, um, and how old they are. Um, and that's what we'll base it off of, but it is off of a percentage. So they might not start receiving anything back until I don't know, average would be maybe four or five years in. Um, but if they let it lapse or cancel, they'll at least get something back, which is a cool feature. Um, and it can really help wrap up the sale if they're nervous at all and have that objection of, what if I never use it? Well, if you never use it, you'll get your premiums back. And it's actually a more affordable writer than you'd think. On the older ages, it can sometimes double it, but for those younger middle age, um, it's actually more affordable than you'd think. So look at adding that one on with your. Um, illustrations. So we're going to go um, start talking about those business owners. Um, I mentioned we have a business overhead expense product um, and we really want to use that to kind of create a package for those small business owners. So with those business owners, you want to make sure that they're protected on both sides, on the family and the business side. So you want them to be thinking paycheck protection, which is to protect their own income. So make sure that they can still pay all the bills, that their family is taking care of their mortgage, all of that by using the Century Plus disability product. <clears throat> and then you want to have them thinking payroll protection. So with that business overhead expense, 
which reimburses the monthly amount of their business expenses, um, which we'll go over that product here a little further here soon. But um, you want them to make sure that their business can continue even though they're not able to work and be super actively involved anymore because of their disability. Um, but you want to make sure they're covered on both ends. And a lot of small business owners especially aren't really thinking like that. So you want to get them thinking this way and have them um, kind of realize that they need to protect both ends, not just one or neither. So that's why this is such a, a huge market and a huge opportunity because if you know those small business owners, more than likely they haven't been talked to or they haven't even thought about it and you can actually sell them two different policies. So that business owner expense, the issue ages are 18 to 60, just like the Century Plus. Um, they have to be working full time, so at least 30 hours a week, be in business for one year and have a net profit of at least 10,000 in the last year. We'll only do three occupation classes, so it's the 4A, 3A, and 2A. So those 1A is the more high risk, high risk occupation like the roofers, chiropractors, all of that, we won't, um, they won't be able to qualify for this product. Maximum issue limit per month is $20,000 worth of business expenses. So we'll actually take a look at their um, tax returns, their Schedule C, um, if they have an expense spreadsheet, we'll take a look at that to kind of determine how much they need per month. It has a benefit period of one or two years, elimination of 30, 60, 90, and it is guaranteed renewable as well. <clears throat> we will do an occupation class upgrade for business owners. So if they fall into those eligibility requirements that are up towards the top, they can actually move from say a 2A to a 3A. Say they own a salon, they're a cosmetologist, so they're actually a 2A, um, but they're applying for that business overhead expense. We can actually bump them up to a 3A on both the Century Plus and the business overhead um, because they are a business owner and they fall on the eligibility requirements. So kind of a cool perk for business owners. So a good example of those covered expenses that we will reimburse <clears throat> employee salaries, so again, protection, protecting their payroll, wages and benefits, uh, utilities, we're looking at rent or mortgage, property taxes, other fixed expenses. So again, we're looking at fixed expenses, um, office furniture, equipment, so any leases um, that are paid each month. So again, a fixed, fixed expense. They have to be regularly scheduled payments. So again, we'll look at that Schedule C and their tax returns. <clears throat> So what we'll do is it's actually, um, oops, let me go back. It's actually a reimbursement type deal. So they will go ahead and pay their monthly expenses and then we will, we will reimburse them. So let's say that they qualify for the full max amount of 20,000 and in that first month, they only end up using 18,000 of it. Well, we'll actually roll over that extra 2,000 over to the next month. So say they need to hire another person for some additional help that next month, they can actually cover it because they have that 22,000 waiting for them. So it's not a use it or lose it product, which is also an awesome um, awesome deal there with it. Um, and business owners like to write off those premiums. So I think that's a cool feature as well. Moving on to that simplified disability, product. Um, I know this comes kind of towards the end of the presentation, but I think it's actually one of our strongest products. Um, and I'll tell you why. This one um, has issue ages of 18 to 59, so we are losing a year. Um, and then there's two occupation classes. This is kind of flip-flopped. It's a two or a one, uh, but the one is actually going to be the desk jobs and the two is going to be the more high-risk occupations. So it's kind of flip-flopped from the 4A, 2A, 3A, all of that with the Century Plus. The monthly benefit um, amount goes up to 3,000. And this is kind of what I wanted to touch on and why I think this product is so important and overlooked um, for most people. There was a study done uh, by a group, I think it was just last year or maybe two years ago at the most, um, where they found that um, median housing costs for 90% of Americans is actually just under $1,500 a month. And that's including um, mortgage, insurance payments, and utilities. So those are three of the biggest um, fixed monthly expenses for a family. 
So when people think, oh, I need I need five thousand dollars to cover all of my expenses to pay my car, blah blah blah, um, they actually don't need as much as they think they do. So a lot more people would qualify for that simplified product than you'd think. And the reason why you'd want to use that simplified product is because it can move, it can move quick. They don't need um, medical exams. They don't need um, financial verification. Um, the most they'd probably need is a phone interview. I'd have them prepared to at, maybe do a phone interview. <clears throat> it just depends what we find on the um, script check, motor vehicle report, all of that. And it might just need a quick review by an underwriter. But um, a lot of these simplified disability um, apps are going in and out in four days or less. So it's a really cool product that you know, covers really all the basics and doesn't make them have to go out and do a lot of work, which nobody really wants to go out and do a pyramid or provide all their tax returns and stuff like that. So this really keeps the product simplified as the name um, kind of hints at. Um, and if someone is looking for more of a short term product, this would be a good um, solution for that because we do go down to six months for the benefit periods, um, one, two, years as well, elimination period, 30 days, and then we go up to six months, and it is guaranteed renewable to age 67. So moving into the sales ideas, we'll start with those dental hygienists. I mentioned that this is a good niche for a surety because a lot of uh, carriers actually won't take them for whatever reason, and we'll take them out of 3A. So <clears throat> we have a 36-year-old dental hygienist that earns $72,000 a year. So she takes home after taxes about $4,300 a month. So she has a group DI policy that pays 60% of her gross income, um, so $3,600 a month. Her group benefit is taxable, so her benefit actually comes out to $2,810 per month. So that's quite a bit um, less than the $4,300 that she's typically bringing in pre-disability. So there is a gap there. So with a surety DI, we're wanting to close that gap. So the solution would be that Century Plus Disability Insurance, and we'll pay her that extra $800 that she is missing due to those taxes. And she'll only pay $29.83 a month uh, <clears throat> for that premium. And she's getting a 90-day elimination, 10-year benefit period, Again, it's a tax-free monthly policy, so it helps cover that gap and bring her monthly net income back up to 3610, which is getting closer to that 4300. So she's able to pay um, everything that she needs to if she were to be disabled. So that's a great um, sales idea for that occupation specifically, but also how we can help close that gap and not we don't have to be the sole um, coverage but we can help close gaps if someone does give you the objection of, um, I already have DI through work. Okay, well, let's take let's sit down and take a look at it and see what it actually covers for how long and what type of benefit, because we may be able to help get you the full coverage um, that you're eligible for. So we have a contractor here, Mike's 35 years old. He is a business owner and he has three employees. So good opportunity there to cover not only him, but all of his employees as well. His net personal income is 60,000 and his monthly business expenses are 15,000. So the sales idea here, um, the 15,000, we just kind of want to show you what those monthly expenses, what the breakdown is for him. So you'll see the office rent, um, <clears throat> the payrolls there, vehicle rentals, all fixed expenses. So the solution here is Century Plus and BOE. So we're creating a nice little business owner package for him. He qualifies for the 3A occupation class because he got bumped up from the 2A because that business owner upgrade. And he gets a 15% income increase because um, that's another business owner upgrade that we give uh, if they qualify with the eligibility that we talked about on the BOE slide. Um, if they qualify for that, they will receive a 15% income enhancer, which gives them more of a monthly benefit. And then both his paycheck and payroll will be protected. So you'll see the monthly benefit there for the personal side and how much of a monthly premium he'll be making, or how much of a monthly premium he'll be paying. And then the BOEs there at the bottom, so you see the premium, 
he qualifies for 15,000, which will cover all of his business expenses. So total cost for him to cover both himself and his uh, business is 145.44. One thing I do wanna throw out, because um, it did mention that he has three employees, um, most likely he's not gonna qualify for group insurance or it's just not gonna be worth it. So he could write um, Century Plus or Simplified on his employees or just Century Plus on his employees, and we actually will do a 15% discount if we write three policies or more within the same group. So if he got a BOE, he got a Century Plus for himself, and then he got <clears throat> three others for his employees, that's over three um, issued policies, so he'll get 15% off on the personal DI and 5% on the BOE. So going over niches real quick, um, middle income, we say we're priced best at about $150,000 and under for that uh, salary, for that annual income. And then small businesses, like we just went over with the contractor idea, um, we work really well in that business space because we can create a nice package for them. <clears throat> and then pink collar, um, this is the women market. So those markets where women really overtake that occupation. So nurses, or just anyone in the medical field, um, teachers, social workers, event planners, those are good um, good examples. And this is a highly untouched market for one reason or another. So it's a really good one to really target. So other common objections that we hear, we'll survive on my spouse's income, we'll use our savings, um, it's too expensive. Um, I can rely on social security disability, accidents and illnesses won't happen to me. So just a few of those things there. We'll survive on our spouse's income. Well, this might be just a good first thought for them, um, but you wanna make sure that they really sit down and calculate all of their monthly expenses and make sure that they can truly cover all of those on just one income. We'll use our savings. No one really wants to dip into their savings because that's for true emergencies. Um, and what if that only covers <clears throat> a month or two? It's too expensive. Um, with all the different writers and both the Simplified and the Century Plus Disability product, I think that we can really make um, anything work for that specific client that you're working with. So there's a lot of wiggle room there um, and you can really create a product based on what they need um, in their budget. And if you need help with that, definitely reach out to Oscar over at Art Jetter and he can help you design that. I can rely on social security disability. We all kind of know how that works. Usually they have to apply um, more than one time to be able to um, at least get something and it might take months and months and months, maybe up to a year to, for it to actually kick in or to be accepted. So you never want to rely on social security kicking in right after their disability. So make sure they do know that. Accidents and illnesses won't happen to me. We kind of went over this. At the beginning when I gave you especially that um, that statistic about the one in four people in their 20s will suffer a disability at some time during their working life. So um, you want to make sure that they know that even um, disabilities happen to those that are in their 20s. They may come down with a, an illness. Um, it's not, not just work-related um, accidents. It's on and off the job accidents. It is um, illnesses that leave them totally disabled. Um, anything is possible and you don't want them to be left high and dry when the in, um, unimaginable does happen to them. So tools to help you build your DI sales. <clears throat> you can go to assuredydi.com. That's where we have all of our marketing materials. There's also sales ideas. So that contractor sales ideas up there. There's a few other ones with different occupations. Um, how to overcome objections to DI, that's one of our marketing materials. There's different webinars, um, underwriting videos as well that our underwriting team put together. And then we have a DI quarter as well. So if you go to uh, diquarter.assurity.com, it's actually a quick quarter um, and it can be used on a mobile device as well or an iPad or tablet or whatnot. Um, so keep that in mind that diquarter.assurity.com if you just need a quick quote. <clears throat> All right, now I open it up for questions. I'm gonna go ahead and open that chat box here. 
And Oscar, let me know if you have any chats come in on your end. Otherwise, feel free to reach out to Oscar over at uh, diadder.com, and then that phone number is listed there as well. Otherwise, thank, uh, yeah, I don't have well, any Thanks for the presentation, Morgan. And uh, uh, like Morgan said, uh, any questions, uh, feel free to uh, reach out to me. Uh, nope, none on my end, but uh, feel assured that I will reach out to you personally, and uh, any questions that you, that you may have, I will answer on the phone call that I will have with you as well. Cool. Sounds good. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining, and have a wonderful Wednesday. All right, thanks, everybody.